30 with the Yamaha Wolverine X2 1000. This is Yamaha's newest side-by-side. -side. Of course, before there was already the X2 850, and now there's this bigger step up with the R-Max engine. So it's a 999cc parallel twin, like what's in the R-Max 1000. And it's still a little bit more stripped down than the R-Max. So you don't get quite all the same features that the R-Max gets, which means you also don't get quite the same price tag as the R-Max. So if you want a combination, utility, and recreation side by side, that's not gonna break the bank. And you don't need to carry around four people, but you do wanna have that bed in back. This is gonna be the side by side from Yamaha that you want. This machine is 61 inches wide and 83.7 inches long. It also has 12 and a half inches of ground clearance, but if you run out, you can see there are steel skid plates underneath with some service access. For suspension on this new, more entry-level machine, you get these piggyback reservoir shocks. These are from ZF. They're nothing too, too crazy, but they do have some preload adjustment that you can see in there as well as high and low speed compression adjustments. And it's 13.3 inches of travel up front and 15.5 inches of travel in the rear. The bed on this machine has a 600 pound capacity and it is an assisted tilt bed. So if you are using this for some amount of utility, then this is going to be pretty helpful. That 600 pound capacity is nice to have. This isn't the biggest bed in any of these machines by far, but that is one of the perks of this machine in particular, is that it is relatively compact. Now currently we are in North Carolina. This is Brushy Mountain Motorsports Park, just outside of Charlotte. And we've got a mix of trails. So right now we're on some more technical riding, but uh, we're going to do a mix. A lot of it's very tight and very narrow, which is nice. For us in these machines because this is a, a pretty small machine it's 83.7 inches in its wheelbase and it's 61 inches wide which makes it easy to maneuver also this powertrain has the ultramatic cvt it's familiar transmission as well with yamaha's killer frankly 10-year belt warranty i mean that that is something that you really don't find anywhere else in a 10-year belt warranty that inspires a lot of confidence and it shows that Yamaha has a lot of confidence in this CVT transmission. They don't want to be replacing belts all the time for free on their own dime. So, you know, <laughs> it goes to show that I know it's a CVT, but this is a pretty tough setup right here. Now, overall, I have a lot of good things to say about this side-by-side. -side. I think the suspension is really great especially at this price point it's nice and plush i like the powertrain i mean this is obviously not nearly the most powerful side by side out there that you can get but it's a thousand cc's it's nothing to shrug your shoulders at and especially on some tighter trails like this it's really not bad however my biggest gripe is the steering through this electric power steering i know it is torque and speed sensitive but there's not a ton of feedback from it. And I'll give you an example. So here I'm full lock, but I mean, I can rack the wheel pretty far in either direction before it really starts to change direction a whole lot. So on these tighter switchbacks, it means my hands are doing a ton of work and the steering just feels like it leans maybe a little bit more utility than sport, but at the same time, this is a combination utility and recreation side by side. And I love that it has that utility side to it because the bed in back with a 600 pound capacity as well as that two inch receiver that lets you tow 2000 pounds, that's all really nice to have. The more boxes that a machine like this can tick, the easier it is to justify to your significant other, right? Now, right now, the outside of this machine is really muddy and the uh, inside of it is kind of getting there as well. But here you can see a few of your controls. So this is how you switch between two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive limited slip, and four-wheel drive with a diff lock. 
You also have your headlight control here as well. Your steering wheel has 17 degrees of adjustment. You can also adjust your seat. And then in the center, you have just a basic LED layout right here that tells you everything that you need to know, what your drive mode is in. This is your drive mode selector down here, three different positions, sport, trail, and crawl. And it gives you your speed, what your four wheel drive is doing, and a few other figures like a clock and a trip odometer, as well as your fuel gauge. The X2 also gives you some pretty well insulated storage right here as the glove box. You also have a center console as well, although not super deep, and a couple cup holders. Now here it opens up a little bit, so I'm going to switch into two-wheel drive sport mode, give it a little throttle, and uh, pretty quickly it does liven up a good bit. I've primarily been trail mode and four-wheel drive, which is great all around. It still gives you some pretty smooth driving characteristics, and having the engine braking all four wheels is pretty nice on a lot of the downhills, but man, <laughs> yeah, it livens up this side-by-side -side quite a bit when you change through the modes. Those modes make a pretty significant difference. All right, now we have a slightly more articulated downhill section, so I'm going to go back into four-wheel drive and into crawl mode. And, you know, I don't think we're going to need the four-wheel drive diff lock mode at any point today. This is just not quite technical enough to call for it. But of course, that is an option. You can drive it around fully locked up like that. But even in this regular four-wheel drive setting, it is four-wheel drive limited slip. So really solid traction again, partly thanks to these Maxxis 28-inch tires. And yeah, crawl mode is very, very smooth. So you can be pretty ham-handed with the throttle and the side-by-side -side is just not gonna be jerky. Now the base model machine starts at $17,999, but if you go up to the XTR that you see here, that brings you to $19,999, and it gets you a few extra features, including this painted bodywork, this roof panel, as well as the mirror. But the biggest of the changes is this 4,500 pound worn winch that comes factory installed on the XTR model. For wheels, you get these 14 inch tuning fork style Yamaha wheels, as well as wrapped around them, these Maxxis Bighorn tires that are pretty good all around. Now, for those of you who are longtime viewers, you will remember, hey, we've folks. got Steven here. How's it going, dude? <laughs> good, man. I mean, having a great day out here riding. It's, uh, it's nice to see you and all the folks at TFL. Yeah, absolutely. I think actually the very first event I ever went on was with you in Your uh, first TFL event Vegas. was yeah. my last TFL event, yeah. <laughs> which is funny, right? Exactly. So Steven used to be with us over at TFL Off-Road. And mm -hmm. what are you thinking of the day in the machine so far? Yeah, I mean, it's been a great ride. Uh, amazing trails. Um, I think the big key with the X2 1000 is just going to be you know, where does it fit into the lineup? You right. know, where, what customer wants this thing um, between an R-Max and then the 850 Wolverine? So I think that's going to be sort of the question, which almost remains to be answered. We're going to see how it sells. But yeah. as a machine, it's running great, man. Love the engine, love the power, suspension's good. Yeah, no so complaints. far, it seems like a really good all-arounder, and mm -hmm. it's kind of nice to have a smaller footprint on the trails that we're on today. Totally, absolutely. Even in, you know, I've been in an R-Max a lot lately and it just feels a little bit bigger, beefier, wider in all ways. So yeah, it's nice. And these are tight trails in here, really tight. Yeah. So we were just talking about, we are brushing our roofs a couple times on those trees yeah. as you lean into them. So <laughs> anyways, yeah, nice to be a little bit smaller. <laughs> exactly. So to check out Steven's full review on the machine, go check them out at TK Power Sports. That's They're it. gonna have their full review over there. Yeah, appreciate you guys. Take care, everybody. Also, if you ever need some fresh gear, be sure to check out our partners over at Revzilla. They provided us with all of the built brand red, white, and blue gear that you see me wearing in this video. And this stuff is pretty kick-ass because it's not crazy expensive, but it looks and it performs really well. So be sure to check out Revzilla.com for any of the gear that you might need. Now, if I were shopping for a side-by-side -side with my own money, and I wanted something that was a combination of work and play, then this would be pretty high up on my list, partly because of the price point, but also just because it's a good all-arounder. It kind of strikes a lot of those categories pretty well, 
ticks a lot of boxes and that's something that I appreciate when a machine can be pretty versatile. I do like the extra features that you get on the R-Max, but for me, I like the price point on this better. Anyways, that's all for this video and we'll catch you guys in the next. Drop us a comment, let us know what you think and enjoy the summer.